One of the most terrifying developments in them pushing forward toward online interaction and online maintenance and service, they're going to do, couldn't believe this when I heard it, they're going to do online login system that uses your voice as your identifier. So scary. Hi, welcome to this episode of Stacks Over Tax. I'm Sterling Grace, and this is Mark Lewis. And today we're going to talk about the IRS and AI. So recently, you may not have heard that the IRS had a symposium in Louisiana. And at that symposium, they had a conversation about ChatGPT and AI and how the changes are radically going to impact us in the future. And like all areas of industry, uh, AI and the robots are just coming to take over. So uh, so give us a scoop about what's coming soon with the AI and the chat GPT. What's coming to a mailbox near you? What's coming to a mailbox near you? You probably figured this out by now. The IRS, uh, until very recently, has basically been using technology from the 60s. To, uh, you know, even right now at Ogden, their big, big business center, they're manually opening letters that you send in by hand and scanning them and doing all this. I mean, that's where they're at. So there's been a bunch of scuttlebutt about, you know, the 87,000 new agents that they hired that was brought down to 60,000 and brought back to 80,000. They're going to audit everybody. And there's a bunch of changes, but most of them have to do with artificial intelligence managing some of the, and if not, they wanted to get it completely automated so that AI is looking for specific patterns and issues that they can see that are super obvious to be able to stop fraud, to be able to stop tax evasion and, and other kinds of money laundering schemes that are going on all the time. That right now, kind of agents have to actually look at and and, juxt- and figure this out. And that's very, very difficult, very, very time consuming, and very, very tiring. So AI right now is, is basically permeating all areas of the IRS as fast as possible. In fact, this year I got letters. Some of you may have gotten letters to your C-Corp saying that you owe alternative minimum tax. And you're like, that hasn't been around since 2017 for C-Corps. So um, they're trying, they're stumbling but very, they're very quickly moving toward AI so that everything is automated. Now, on one hand, this is really, really good because how often have you sat on the 1040 phone line and waited for hours and sometimes never get to an agent? And some of you don't realize that the way to get to an agent is to call right before they close. That's your best chance. But this is a very cumbersome process. In fact, uh, Sterling and I right now are in a process where we're trying to figure out what to do with a particular IRS process. We can't really call. We don't know what to do. There's no online portal to help us. So they're going online and pushing toward the ability to have everything automated in terms of customer service. Right now, they're going to roll out a chat bot so that when you go to irs.gov, there's going to be a chat bot and you can tack and you know algorithmic AI answers. But that's better than nothing, better what we're having to do now. Um, one of the great things that's happened is this year alone, they've been able to take what was a $1 trillion tax gap. In other words, people, the American people owe an extra trillion dollars in taxes that the IRS has been unable to collect. But in the last year, they brought it to half a trillion. So $500 billion has been collected in the last year, which is amazing. Now, I know you're like, well, wait a minute, taxes are bad. Yes, but these are from people that owe taxes. They should be paying and are not. And that's attributable to some of these new automated processes, which is really, really great. On the other hand, however, AI is terrifying because not only did I just get some weird letters for their C corporations, but who's to respond if you did have a significant problem? Now, granted, there's tax professionals and they'll be able to always have their connections. And there's a whole bunch of changes going on with tax professionals and things like that, people who can represent you before the IRS. But the, one of the most terrifying developments is in them pushing forward toward online interaction and online maintenance of customer service. They're going to do, and I, I couldn't believe this when I heard it, they're going to do an online login system that uses your voice as your identifier. Yikes. That's so scary. Like, be can, accurate. Because you sound just like the movie phone guy from the 90s. So what's going to happen when he calls in to file his taxes? And you think it's it? me. Like, yeah, I, I know. know. That's a problem. Especially I'll just call, 
<laughs> Hi, IRS. Welcome to Movie Phone. I'd be like, oh, it's that guy. No, no, I'm Spark Lewis. No, no, it's the Movie Phone guy. I don't know. I, I especially when AI can represent audio wise anybody yeah. really well. See, some of the some of the things you know, Sterling, we don't really talk about is really the IRS manages more fraud than any company on the planet. People don't realize how much of what it does is managing fraud. And one of the frauds is unlawful and unreal income tax returns. Their biggest, uh, the, the latest big fraud thing that they've just found was that people were filing, uh, these fraudsters were filing um, powers of attorney, the 2848 form, which means that I have the right, if I file a 2848 on you, then I have the right to get your transcripts, IRS transcripts and all your social and everything else. Well, they will find, they found a way to become a tax professional and file all these fraudulent 2848s on thousands and thousands of people, get their transcripts and then sort through very quickly the people who hadn't filed taxes and then get all of these big withholding checks sent to them from people who never filed and nobody knows. And now there's all these withhold. Oh, well, you have all these deductions. You have to give us all our money back. And nobody gets, nobody knew what was going on until it was too late. Even on YouTube now, there's a whole issue about deep faking, right? And um, and we have a, a good friend who's who's well known in the world. And I saw a video the other day that's completely deep faked. None of it happened at all. They took a, a video that was already made and and they just re calibrated a video that was already made and made it say something entirely different mm -hmm. and had them pitching a product that they would never have been pitching. And um, yeah, that, that technology has gotten crazy with AI and the way that they're able to go in and just take your face and voice and even old photographs. Now they can take a photograph from the seventies and make it into a video, which is mm -hmm. shocking. So I have lots of concerns about how this is going to go with keeping us all safe here in America. Yeah. Well, and in the IRS, it kind of doesn't have a choice. It just doesn't have the manpower to be able to manage all the things that it's having to manage. And um, I, I get it. It's terrifying, but it really means only one thing. And that is that just because they went to AI doesn't mean that the Internal Revenue Code doesn't apply. And the Internal Revenue Code has so many loopholes and triggers and all kinds of protections for taxpayers. And the IRS's primary mandate is that taxpayers are heard. They've been given justice. They've basically gotten what they needed. And if not, then they're treated fairly. Those are the, I mean, I'm compart I'm, uh, you know, retranslating that, but those are the three big areas that the IRS must behave. If it's not behaving there, you'll find hundreds, if not thousands of pages of the Internal Revenue Code to be able to throw it back at officers, AI, whatever, and say, these are your three mandates and you're breaking one, two, or all three of these. You have to stop. And that's not going to change with AI. So I'm glad for that at least, but you got to know what those are, or at least have somebody on your tax team that knows what to do with those. Thanks so much for joining us here on Stacks Over Tax. And if you have enjoyed being with us so far, as much as we've enjoyed being with you, smash that subscribe button and make sure you hit the little bell for notifications so that every time we put out a new video or any other kind of content, you're notified and you can have the great time again with us. Thanks so much. As always, uh, a new era is upon us. That's right. Yeah. Well, pretty soon we'll be having our taxes filed. It'll be AI filing taxes to AI. And then, you know, do, Amazon's going to be dropping us with drones or packages and we won't even have to leave the house. I'm mostly just still waiting on Rosie, that house robot that was supposed to make me breakfast. That's most mm -hmm. of what I'm still waiting on. But I'm going to give that seven years. Okay. Well, that's all right. I can wait seven years for breakfast. 2032. So. Yep. All of life would change if you had great breakfast every morning. So that is true. At, at least if you're an acts of service person like me, like that, mm -hmm. that would be like the epitome of life is to have somebody make breakfast every morning. You so, could have robot yeah. love. I could. Yeah. I think I could be really happy. So I have, I have a great working relationship with uh, Claude. I use Claude for, for my AI. And, and I think Claude and I have a lovely, lovely, lovely correspondence together. So mm -hmm. I think he really gets me. <laughs> <laughs> At least I he's convinced him. me he has. Yeah. You fired him, which I, fired him. I don't think you weren't nice enough to him, which I think is something you, you got to be nice to the robots. I think they're definitely keeping up with like, who just comes in and, you know, makes demands and mis mistreats them. And then who comes in and is like, good morning, how are you? So, yeah.
Yeah, I have a bad relationship with my. I've had more than one person say that I'm cruel to my AI. Yeah, I think I think you got it. I think you gotta, and that's odd because you're not cruel in life. So what is that about? Yeah. Just bullying uh, well, the AI. It, well, it's not that. There's a few things. I'm a very patient, very zen kind of man <laughs> generally, but there are a few things that push me over the edge in two seconds or less. First of all, LA traffic. I've yet to be able to transform my attitude when driving in LA traffic. Hence, why I don't live there. But also when gear doesn't work. Some of you know, I've spent several decades doing music for film and television. And I've I, since I was a kid, I've been dealing with music gear. And when gear that I paid good money for that's supposed to be working doesn't work, it doesn't last long for me before I lose my mind. And software is no different. Thus, when AI doesn't work and it's supposed to be working, even with simple questions, like I'll ask it certain questions about the tax code. The tax code is plain as day. And like, well, is it, what's this? Oh, it's this. I'm like, I know that's not true. Why would you say this? Oh, well, because I was looking at this other guy. Remember how I told you, you bozo, to look at the Internal Revenue Code? Oh, yes. Well, I should do that. You think? Anyway, so I have no patience for gear not working. Yeah. The thing I've had to do recently is tell it that I'm not looking for therapy advice. Mm -hmm. I find it somewhat alarming that it uh, has started taking information from multiple different chat threads and putting it together and coming up with ideas. And I'm like, that's that's not what I'm asking for here. I'm just mm -hmm. asking for the following information, not needing any therapy advice from you. Uh, but I appreciate I your offer. So. It's saying therapy device, therapy advice. Yeah, it, it, it literally took some chats that I had recently and pieced together what it thought that I was trying to come up with for a different answer. And I was like, this is super alarming. I'm surprised that this actually is having a cumulative effect. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, the new ChatGP5 takes into account all of your threads. Yeah. And on one hand, that can be really, really great if you need to reference something that you don't know exactly where so, it is. But yeah. You know, I have an alarming amount of friends who use it for psychological purposes, like as a shrink. And I'm like, so it's just taking all of your preferences and telling you what you want to hear. Oh, no, it's not. I'm like, okay. And um, do this because just for you watching, um, we use AI all the time for our business, all kinds of things. And we've sort of become mavens in the world of bizarre prompts. And so I said, okay, ask it the questions or make a project that's you and put all your pertinent information, your astrology, your whatever, your birth date, your pre your food you like, the girls or the boys that you went out with, what schools you went, all of it. And then, and your prompt in that project, say any prompt that I ask you about, act as a devil's advocate. And after you tell me what the, what the answer is, tell me why I should never take your advice mm. and then it gets really really interesting we're like aha and they didn't like that nobody likes that they just want to be told what they want to hear <laughs> well hopefully the robots will make our lives better and uh more efficient before they kill us before, before they kill they us kill all us. yes exactly <laughs> For those of you who have not seen Terminator, please, please go back and rent that old movie and find out how this is going to all go. Uh, we'll look at the <laughs> prophecy called the Terminator, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, and the other, the other prophecy, which is uh, Ready Player One, there's your other prophecy. Yeah, I haven't watched that. I wanted to read the book, so I've been waiting, yeah. but I think we're getting now I should have the robot read the book to me that's what I should be doing I, <laughs> just have the robot give you a new video of how it looks and it's a clip note version so you can watch the whole movie in two minutes yeah, that's a good idea that's a really good idea I like that so very <laughs> fun well thanks for getting us all caught up on the IRS and AI and what we should be watching out for in the future mm -hmm.